The newest addition to the Notion app suite is here. Meet Notion Mail, an app that integrates into your Gmail account to help you manage your inbox. Today, I wanna to share how you can set up this new and free addition to your Notion setup and all of the features you need to know about. I'm also going to be sharing how I am personally using Notion Mail at this time, so stay tuned for that. Let's go ahead and dive in. Notion Mail connects with the Gmail account that is connected to your current Notion account. At the moment, this does need to be a Gmail email address, but they are working on integrating in with other providers very soon. Now, something important to note is that if you sign up to Notion Mail with a different email address than the one that is connected to your Notion workspace, it's going to create a brand new Notion account. So for example, my Notion account is registered under my business email address. And so if I try to add another account with my personal email address, it's going to create a whole new Notion account, including a Notion workspace, Notion calendar, all that kind of stuff. That is not something I want to do. I only want to have one Notion account. So that is something to keep in mind if you're wanting to connect multiple emails at the moment. I'm hoping the ability to add multiple email addresses will be coming soon because that is something that is actually currently available in Notion calendar. So I feel like that would be a natural extension to Notion Mail as well. So let's take a look at this inbox. What is really cool about Notion Mail is that it allows you to add your own custom views of your inbox over here on the side. So you see all of these views available here. Those are all views that I have personally created showing specific filters or groupings so I can see specific emails. The only view that you cannot get rid of completely is your inbox. That needs to stay but you are able to add filtering and grouping to that if you want to. So if you saw my email on how I organize my Gmail account, you'll notice that I have grouped the starred emails up here at the top and then everything else at the bottom, which is very similar to how I have my Gmail set up too. You can find all of the settings to customize this up here at the very top. So we have our filter first, which allows us to filter by multiple things, including if it's been read or unread, if there's an attachment, any labels that are on it, all the way down to when it was received or the date that the email came in. So you really can get creative here. The next setting we have is grouping. And so this allows you to group your emails by certain categories. As I mentioned, I have mine grouped by starred. So the starter at the top and then everything else is at the bottom, but you can group by date or other properties like labels or priority. Something that I have noticed is that you do need to have a grouping. You can't just turn off grouping. If you want it to kind of not have grouping, the best one I can suggest for you is the date. So it'll group by when it came into your inbox. But right now there's not really a way to just turn this off. Then if we head over here to our settings, there are some cool different things that you can customize here. One being the properties, which is what is actually showing on the email. So I have mine set to show who it's from, what the subject is, a little peek at the body of what is actually in the email itself, also the labels and if there's any files. I personally do not use the Gmail categories. Those are like the promotions and social and things that Gmail kind of automatically groups it by. Notion does pull that information in, but I do not use those labels. So I've pretty much turned them off as much as I can in all the places I can. <laughs> Back in our settings, we can also see the filters that we have active. And then my personal favorite is hover actions. So if you pop into this setting, this allows you to customize what you are able to do with your email from the front. So if I close this little tab out real quick, if we hover over an email, you'll see there are multiple little icons here of what I can do with that email. And so you can go in and customize that for each of your views. In my inbox, I keep a few actions available. One is to star it because that means I need to take an action on it. If I really need it to add to my to-do list, I will add a very specific label that is marked to-do. And I actually have a zap going through Zapier that throws that over to Notion for me so it does get added to my to-do list. Then I also have the ability to mark it read or unread. 
trashed, archived, and then adding any label to the specific email. As you can see, there are a few other options here that you can add if you want to, like replying very quickly or marking something as spam. But I think my favorite action is this add specific label down here because you can customize this to be any label that you have within your Gmail account. And all you have to do is click on the icon and it will automatically apply that label for you. That being said, it is important to note that Notion Mail automatically imports all of your labels in from Gmail. So they're basically syncing back and forth. If you make a label in Notion Mail, it will also make one in Gmail. If you make one in Gmail, it'll make it in Notion Mail too. So let's take a look at what it looks like when you compose an email. From first looks, this pretty much looks like a very basic email editor right here. But what's really cool about it is that you can actually use Notion commands here. So just like you can in Notion pages, if you type a slash and then start typing for a block, it'll let you add in those specific blocks. So we have the options to do just plain text, we can do headings, we can do bulleted lists, numbered list, code, quotes, callouts, all those things that you can actually do in Notion, at least with the basic blocks, you can add those in to Notion Mail, which is so cool. I have personally got really used to using that slash command to find blocks in Notion. So now that I can do it in Mail too, that is pretty nice. Down at the bottom, we have a few quick actions. One is to add an attachment, just like you would in Gmail. You can throw a file onto an email. We also have snippets that we can insert, which we'll take a look at in just a second. These are basically like pre-made email templates. And then we can also insert a scheduling snippet, which is connected straight with Notion Calendar and people can schedule meetings with you, which I think is super cool. And we will take a look at that in a second too. And then lastly, of course, if you just want to delete this, you can get rid of your draft from there. Inside these three little dots here, this is actually my email signature from Gmail that I have. It looks a little funky in here. I see all of my little icons are in a vertical line, which in Gmail, they're actually a horizontal line, so they don't look this weird but I have tested it and if I send an email, it looks completely normal. So it's probably just how it's showing up here in Notion. If yours comes in a little bit wonky, don't panic about it, just test it first, it's probably okay. And then one other thing here I wanted to point out, which I think is super cool, is the ability to schedule when you are going to send your emails. This isn't necessarily like super groundbreaking, but I really like that it gives you options that are completely random because that's kind of how normal people would work, right? If we just send an email whenever, this gives you just random times to throw things out there so it looks like you actually were doing it even though you scheduled it in advance. Of course, if you wanted to go at a very specific time, you can add a custom date here instead. So let's take a quick look at our scheduling snippets. If I go ahead and press this button down here at the bottom to insert our availability, it's going to add a link that says schedule here at the moment, you cannot change this text. That is the pre-made link that just populates there, but you can change how long the meeting is going to be, what the name of the meeting is going to be, and then also if you are meeting on your connected conferencing or if you don't want conferencing for the specific meeting. Once you've got that set, you can literally drag and drop your availability right here in the email editor. You don't even have to go to Notion Calendar, which I think is so cool. And it makes it so easy to respond to emails quickly with your availability if somebody wants to book a quick call with you. Then with our normal snippets that are just kind of little email templates, you can actually find those by typing the slash command and searching the name of your snippet. So for example, I have a quick one set up for scheduling with me. If I start to type in schedule, that snippet will show up right here and I can go ahead and enter that in. If you don't wanna use the slash command to enter that information in, you can come down here and press our little insert snippet button, and then we can find our snippets here as well. So something else that's pretty cool about snippets is that if you add a recipient that is in your contact list, so let's just say I send it to myself here, it's going to actually add in the first name for me and I don't have to do that. To add in additional snippets, you can either come down here and go ahead and turn this into a snippet or create a new snippet 
that is completely separate from what you're actually working on right now if you want to. You can also come up to your settings here and edit your snippets from here too. While we're in settings, I'm going to hop into the inbox settings. We could take a peek at a few of these features. One is the theme mode. So you can choose to have a light or dark or whatever your system is. The thread style, which is how your emails actually display when you open them. So I have chosen to open mine in a side peek so I can easily just go through them. I will show you that in just a second. And then you can also choose whether or not you want to auto advance your emails as you're going through them. I personally have this set to go to next thread. I think this is fantastic. It makes it so easy for me to get through my emails but you can also have it go to previous or you can just close the thread completely. I also want to point out the font size really quickly here. I have mine set all the way to large, which seems a little bit excessive, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I put it too small here for just a minute. It is so tiny. I'm like, I cannot read that. That is way too much text for me. So I went ahead and put it all the way to large and I do feel like this is a lot easier for me to read and I'm not trying to fish out what it is that I'm looking for. So if you're having trouble with the interface, double check the font size. <laughs> While I'm in here, I'm also gonna take a quick look at the signature just so you can see what is available. You have the option to include your signature on replies and forwards, which I usually do. You can also turn on or turn off the set with Notion mail setting. This is totally up to you on whether or not you want to include that. And then you can also edit your signature, which is actually going to take you to Gmail. So you do need to have that set in Gmail first. As I mentioned before, my signature came up a little bit funky in the email editor, but when I sent it, it was totally fine. So yours should port over just fine. I want to quickly take a look at the Notion AI features as well. I do want to note that this is a paid add-on. So if you have Notion AI in your Notion workspace, you will also get it in Notion Mail. In your settings, you can either come here to add what is called an auto label, or in your inbox, you can add one from the top right here. What's happening here is that Notion AI is essentially looking through your emails and it's deciding how you want it labeled based on parameters you give it. So for example, let's just go ahead and take this first suggestion it gives me where we want to label marketing episodes and insights. You are more than welcome to type in your own description up here in the top, but for this example, I'm just gonna use this one that's already here for me. And then it's going to do some thinking to look for your emails that are relevant to the description you gave it. Once it finds those emails, it's actually gonna let you go through, and this is kind of your chance to train the AI. So you're gonna to wanna to look through and see if these things are actually accurate to what you described to it. If it's not like this, I don't really necessarily want this as a marketing insight, so I'm gonna say no for that one. I can go through and it'll show me a few more if I look for more and go ahead and decide which ones I want to include in that label and what I would prefer to not. Also up here at the top, you can go ahead and edit this. So if we come here, we can edit the label completely and rename it if you want to. You can also change the description and then you can choose whether or not you want it to split from your inbox. If you do, all this is going to do is create a new view over here in your little views tab. If you do want it to stay in your inbox, it's just gonna be in your inbox with that label applied. Right now, I do not personally use this feature because I already have a ton of Gmail filters set up and I do want to note that those get automatically brought over from Gmail. So if we go back to our settings and take a look at the Gmail filters here, you're gonna see all of the filters that I have set up in my Gmail account. The only difference from the Gmail filters and the AI filter is that it is actually going through and deciding for you, whereas the Gmail filters are more manual, you have to go and apply them to the specific emails you want. Personally, I'm a little bit more picky about my emails and where they go, so I do not mind manually creating them one time 
because they're all being sorted for me after that anyway. I do want to note that if you create an AI auto label using the Notion AI, it is going to create a label on the Gmail side of things. So just be aware that that's gonna be happening in the background. The other AI feature that is included here is that you can go ahead and use it to write your emails too. And what I do think is pretty cool is that you can mention Notion pages in your actual workspace. So if I start typing in something from my workspace, you can see I can mention my business uh, hub here and it'll bring in all that information and write an email based on that page. So it is kind of nice if you want to give it that extra context. So how am I currently using Notion Mail? Right now I am mainly using it to process new emails that are coming in. As I mentioned earlier, I do have mine set to open in a side peek and it auto goes through the threads as I delete them. So if I just pop these open and take a look, I can just go through them very easily, deleting them as I need to or saving them if I need to. And I love that you can still see your inbox from here and see part of the message. Whereas in Gmail, it's gonna open up all the way on a full page and then you have to go back to your inbox. I also really enjoyed the email editor and actually writing the emails, as I mentioned before, Love the slash command, so that makes it super quick and easy to write pretty formatted emails. And I love how easy it is to send a Notion calendar scheduling snippet if I have to send out an invite that is separate from what my CRM typically handles for me. However, there are still some features that I think are missing for me to fully switch over from Gmail. As you may have seen in my recent Gmail setup video, I have a pretty robust Gmail setup that makes it super hard for me to switch over. And while I've mainly been able to replicate my workflow from Gmail here in Notion Mail, the biggest thing for me that's missing is nested labels or folders, depending on what you call them. I am really big on saving my emails and I have a lot of nested folders in Gmail, but I'm not gonna lie, these are a little bit tricky to recreate in Notion right now. They are not impossible, but they do not work the same way. As an example, in my outsourcing projects view right here, I have this group to show the two labels that I actually have nested in the outsourcing projects. So. As you can see right here, this is how it pulls in nested labels. It says, okay, this is the main label and this is the sub label. So what I did was create a view and if I pop this open, you can actually see those two sub labels here. But in this view, I have basically just grouped this by label and then I only show those two outsourcing project sub labels. Now for this specific instance, I don't hate this. I actually think it's kind of cool that you can see what's inside each of the sub labels from this view. And then if you pop these open and pop into one specific view, it'll show you all the information from that specific folder. But because we're only showing the two sub labels, the main label is not included here at all. So while that works for me in this specific instance, I actually use my receipts folder to pull in all the new receipts that I get and then my bookkeeper actually goes and sorts them into the receipt sub label. So not having that kind of removes that workflow for me. And so that's not super great for doing that in Notion Mail. To be honest with you, if I was starting from absolute scratch, I could probably come up with a different workflow that would work within Notion Mail. But because it is pulling in things from Gmail and I already kind of have a system there, I would hope that it would kind of work similarly so I don't have to change everything up completely. So I am crossing my fingers that nested labels are coming soon. I also have a few third-party integrations into my Gmail, including an app that saves my emails directly from Gmail itself into Google Drive as a PDF. And then I also have one that is an app that basically lets you put tracking on an email so you can see if people have read it or not. I don't use that all the time, but it is something nice to have if you are working with clients just to see if people are actually reading your emails. Those apps are both really nice for my workflow. And right now there are no third party integrations into Notion Mail. So there is no way to replicate that workflow. Now, this might be a hot take, but I actually would love it if Notion added the ability for us to see 
see if people have read your emails directly from Notion Mail. And honestly, I would even be okay if that was a paid feature because it is something I pay for in that third party app. But I do think that would be pretty sweet and I do think it would be a big value add to Notion Mail itself. Overall, I am really excited to see what the Notion team has in store for Notion Mail because there are some features that I am really excited about and love using. But for now, I am just going to be toggling back and forth between Notion Mail and Gmail. Probably not the most efficient, but hey, what can I say? There are things I like about both. I am curious to know what your initial thoughts on Notion Mail are, so let me know down below in the comments. If you're not quite ready to make the switch to Notion Mail, you can check out my pretty awesome Gmail setup. I know I'm biased in this video next. I'll see you guys soon.